what we're going to do right now is actually talk to an expert, talk to a doctor, talk to one of the top people when it comes to strokes. We're now being joined by Dr. Avad Kishore Pandit, Professor of the Department of Neurology in India's leading medical institute, the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Dr. Dr. Pandit, thank you so much for joining us. I'm just going to uh, really dive into this entire question of strokes. We, we, I know people are concerned about silent heart attacks and silent strokes. I did get a chance to talk to Dr. Trehan about heart attacks a short while back. So tell us about strokes. How common are they? What should people watch out for? What are the warning signals? What should someone do? So stroke is common and it is increasing. And among the cardiac events which we were seeing, we find that these events, cardiac events were going lower, but the stroke incidence and prevalence has certainly increased. And it has been observed over 1980s to 1990s, the incidence has almost increased to nearly 40 to 45%. And if we see the seriousness, it is definitely impacting the socioeconomic, the lifestyle, the lifespan, the quality of life, and the livelihood, and so on. So these are significant. These have significant impact on the uh, life. Okay, so before I come to the part of how you prevent uh, this and how do you guard against this, if I could just ask you, when you said that cardiac incidents uh, uh, are actually going down, but the number of strokes seem to be growing, what would be the reason for that? Because if the cardiac uh, events are, are going down, the strokes should also. Presumably, the two are linked to the same sort of genetic and lifestyle conditions, Indians not eating very well, the genetic predisposition, things like that. So why is there a mismatch between the two? So strokes, I think uh, the incidents have increased because the, there is more awareness of about it. There are better uh, diagnostic facilities which have come up which can diagnose and confirm diagnosis of stroke. And secondly, the risk factors which were prevalent have also increased, like <clears throat> hypertension, increased blood pressure, the diabetes, the sedentary lifestyle, smoking, abdominal obesity, and also the certain things like illicit drug use and genetic factors which are being now more being diagnosed and they have become apparent. So that's why probably the incidents have been found to observe to be increased uh, as far as stroke is concerned. Okay, so stroke numbers going up potentially could also be good news that a lot more people are coming forward, people are getting diagnosed, perhaps getting treatment also then earlier than they would have otherwise. But because this is important, right? Um, Early diagnosis, Dr. Pandit, is something that we believe can make a major difference in a stroke and in the treatment of it and the prognosis uh, of how you're going to do if you've had a stroke. If you get med medical attention within a short period of time, the outcome can be much better. Yes, so the warning signs, I would say that we must remember the word be fast. So the time is brain. So that is the bottom line. And B fast stands for B is balance. If you have loss in your balance suddenly, E is for eyes. If you find a sudden vision loss in your one eye, even if it recovers, but you find there was a vision loss. F is for facial asymmetry. If you find your face is drooping on the one side and there's drooling. Uh, a is for arm in which there is arm weakness. We same time we consider for the leg weakness also. S is your speech. If you are not able to speak, or comprehend, or there is continuous irrelevant which is speech has been coming out, and that is S and T is time. So rush to the nearest hospital, and you can get your treatment initiated. I would add to this one of the other warning signs is your worst headache of the life. So headache is also an important feature. These are the warning signs uh, which we should. So, Dr. Pandit, you're saying that if people are getting any one of these symptoms or a couple of these symptoms and they need to they get to the hospital really urgently, why? What is it that happens then? If they get to the hospital fast, you can reverse it, you can take steps to make sure that there's no brain damage? Yeah, so we know there are uh, two major types of stroke, that is ischemic and hemorrhagic. Ischemic is when there is a blockage in the blood vessel. So, if we treat is, it at earliest, so there will be less amount of neuronal cell damage. So every minute there is loss of 1.9 to 2 million neuronal cells. So we can understand the amount of damage it can occur. It can cause over hours, minutes or 
minutes, hours, and days. So earliest is better. So if we get a ischemic stroke, we do an immediate CT to confirm it, and we rule out other mimics also of the stroke with the imaging. Then if you find a large vessel blockage, then it can be removed mechanically and with the medications that is thrombolytic therapy can be initiated. And this thrombolytic therapy is recommended up to four and a half hours. And this clot removal, definitely up to six hours and in selected cases up to 24 hours also. But I would suggest we should not delay that it is recommended up to 24 hours or that stress can go after some time. So earliest is best. And in hemorrhagic stroke, the most common cause is hypertension. So it's like we are treating in ischemic stroke. So we need to lower our blood pressures in the hemorrhagic strokes as fast as possible. And if you find a source of leak of that hemorrhage, that should be treated, which could be a form of a ballooning, which we call aneurysm, or it could be just leak because of raised blood pressure. So, and third is if you have a clotting disorder in which blood is not clotting, so that can be reversed. So these are the major immediate attention which we give in emergency other than we take care of the overall condition of the patient and other comorbidities. So Dr. Pandit, what you've just explained is important and that's one of the reasons why you've got to be really careful as I was saying a short while back about taking medical advice just from people on you know, social media or because someone tells you. For example, the clot, you can have a stroke because of a clot and in that case sometimes people say have blood thinners, have an aspirin if you're having a stroke because of a clot. So sometimes people try to self-medicate and pop a aspirin or a blood thinner. Now that could work if there's a clot, but if it's a hemorrhagic stroke, it could actually make things much worse. Correct? That's why you need medic proper medical advice on this. Yes, yes. So blood thinners is recommended only for the ischemic, which is the where there is blockage of the blood vessel so yeah. and the thrombolytic therapy and hemorrhagic is these are contraindicated so we cannot give those blood thinners in the hemorrhagic strokes so you're saying be careful about self-medication in a case like this yes yes definitely it's like uh, you should not be initiated on any treatment unless a ct scan or a basic imaging has been done at the nearest step all right, uh, Dr. Pandit, now if you take a look at the country as a whole, the problem is many people don't have access to that sort of medical care immediately. Let's say they're in rural India, they're out somewhere where there's no hospital close by. They can't then get to a hospital or get to medical care fast enough perhaps for that to be, to be reversed. So what do they do in, in a situation like that? I would suggest that they should make aware when they're healthy. If they have a stroke, where do they go as soon as possible? So they should be prepared with the touch or contact point when they have a stroke. It could be far off also, but at least they are prepared. At the, at the primary health centers and district hospitals, there are oh. provisions so they can get primary treatment at district hospitals as well. All right, Dr. Pandit, last question. You know, young people watching this or even old people watching this, being concerned about all these cases they're hearing about, silent heart attacks, silent strokes. What are the right things to do to prevent a stroke? I mean, obviously, look after your blood pressure, I guess, would be one of them. Exercise, don't smoke. But what else? What should people be doing? So uh, you correctly said, uh, so if there are these five things, hypertension, blood diabetes, sedentary lifestyle, and uh, smoking, and heart rhythm disorders, there is irregularity in heart rate. So if these five, six things are taken care, you are almost preventing 85% of stroke. But nowadays what we are seeing is 24 by seven uh, lifestyle. So what we call 24 by seven uh, syndrome where you have everything 24 by seven. So please be careful that the these upcoming or we are observing more associations and positions of stroke due to sleep deprivation, the stre acute stress situation, excessive exercise in a very short period of time, then stresses, and even if you are exposed to air pollution, which is mostly we are seeing in the urban areas. So that needs to be done very carefully that uh, we can prevent it. All right, uh, Dr. Avad Kishore Pandit from the Ames Neurology Department, thank you so much for, for being with us.